Jeg taler i dag med Valentina Sarkova, som i 2015 kom i stormvejr, da hun præsenterede sin nye opdagelse omkring solens dynamo. I stedet for begejstring over et nyt videnskabeligt gennembrud, blev hun mødt med meget kritik, og man forsøgte at fjerne studiet fra offentligheden. Hendes forbrydelse var, at hendes opdagelse gik imod den accepterede opfattelse af, at jorden gradvist bliver varmere, og det er udelukkende også menneskers skyld. I kraft af sin opdagelse kunne Valentina Sarkova se, at solen ville blive mere og mere inaktiv de næste årtier frem. Det vil betyde global faldende temperaturer. Interviewet indeholder mange tekniske termer. Er du ikke helt inde i solfysikken, er her først en lille video, som giver dig bedre mulighed for at følge med i interviewet. Velkommen til. The sun. In three minutes. The sun is a large ball of plasma, which is a conductive gas. The sun rotates like the earth, but the equator of the sun spins faster than the polar regions. Through this differential rotation, the sun is basically turned into large dynamo when magnetic fields are stretched and twisted in the deep layer of the sun's interior. Dark areas can sometimes be observed on the surface of the sun. These dark areas are magnetic field loops that penetrate the sun's surface from the sun's interior, which makes the area look dark. Sunspots, as they are called, has been observed for around 400 years, and can be larger than the size of the Earth. The Sun undergoes various cycles with different interval. The best known is an 11 years cycle, the Schwabe cycle, where the Sun's background magnetic field is shifting polarity with a regular interval. The 11 years cycle starts when the Sun's activity is low, known as solar minimum. No, or very few sunspots, can be seen on the sun's surface. As time goes the activity of the sun will increase and more and more sunspots can be observed as the sun reaches its highest activity level of the cycle, known as solar maximum. After solar maximum has peaked, the sun's activity declines gradually as well as the number of observed sunspots. The declining activity of the sun ends in another solar minimum and the polarity of the sun's background magnetic field has been flipped. Now the 11-year cycle repeat itself again. It's easy to see how the sunspots are linked to the level of sun's activity, therefore they have been used as a visual estimation of the activity of the sun for decades. The highest number of sunspots during the solar maximum, and the number of days without any sunspot in solar minimum, are used to determine the strength of each 11-year cycle in relation to each other. Cycles in the sun with longer time interval, are manipulating the duration and amplitude of 11-year cycle. Several short high peak cycles can appear after each other, known as a grand solar maximum. Likewise, several long low peak cycles can appear after each other, known as a grand solar minimum. These events with longer periods of time where the sun is very active, or very inactive are often named, just like tropical storms. The last many decades the modern civilizations experienced five to six short high peak cycles, named the modern maximum. Centuries ago, the civilizations on Earth experienced several long low peak cycles, like the Dalton Minimum. During the Maunder Minimum the sun was so inactive that scientists at that time, thought that sunspots was a myth, because no one has observed any for almost 70 years. With some basic knowledge of the sun, let's get to the interview. Dr. Valentin Sarkova, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Hi, yeah, I'm glad to be with you and answer your questions. Mm. Uh, can you, uh, for, for the people who don't know you, can you please introduce yourself, like your background and field of research? Yes, um, I am applied mathematician and astrophysicist. I graduated from Kiev National University of, in Ukraine with the first degree and uh, made PhD in astrophysics in uh, main astronomical observatory in Ukraine and since then I'm sharing my mathematical skills and um, theoretical physics of plasma physics skills 
in application to solar terrestrial activity. This is what my main domain. I also did a number of papers on automated recognition of different patterns on the sun, and we even produced a book on it. But it was a part of investigation of the solar activity. We thought that digitized um, operations can help us to improve solar activity index. And only after we discovered that even using all the digital power, we cannot improve uh, activity index defined by sunspots. This is oh. when we decided we need to change the proxy. So it was very useful exercise to help to progress with solar terrestrial physics. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2015, I believe, you, you come out with some quite new discovery about the sun's activity. What, what was it you discovered? Yeah, at that time, as I said, we finished European grant with the 10 participants. Uh, um, European grant of solar observations where we try to automate creation of solar index or every sunspot number and we gone through with an brilliant catalogs of sunspot active region everything which can help you anything you can extract from digital image we had it we had it in relational database and when we started applying this one to trying to improve and predict solar activity, we discovered it doesn't help us much because um, it was still a problem with prediction with the future cycles. So this has um, made us look, maybe we are looking in the wrong direction. And then instead of looking on sunspots, which number on the surface of the sun is very limited, despite the many of them during the solar maximum, but still the area covered by sunspot is very limited. So we thought, what is more abundant on the sun is magnetic field. All the sunspots and everything is floating in the background magnetic field. And we have this magnetic field measured since uh, invention of magnetograph 1976 and these uh, synoptic maps of this magnetic field were published. So we did investigation how this magnetic field and sunspot interfere, and we discovered that even 1976 sticks shown that the actual the antiphase, the, the polarity of the background magnetic field always in antiphase with the polarity of the leading sunspot number. And then we done paper in 2008 proving that actually background magnetic field defines where sunspot sunspots appear on the surface and how they migrate towards the equator. So we discovered that background field has the upper hand. This is why we changed completely. We forgot about sunspot and look at the magnetic field. We done it in 2010 and the first paper published um, using principal component analysis was 2012. We shown that um, actually Everyone thinks that the sun produces a single wave, magnetic wave, which changes with the period of 11 years from cycle to cycle. What we discovered with principal component, that the sun produces not a single wave, but a couple of waves. In each um, occurrence, they produce a pair of waves. So two principal components, then slightly lower, another two components, and slightly lower, another two components. So it, sun indicated us that it produces waves in pairs and they, as soon as they produces wave in pairs, each person who studied the wave theory, they know the wave could interfere with each other, could have constructive interference, increase in amplitude or destructive interference, suppressing each other. So this is how uh, in 2014, we have a team we started looking how we can um, describe these waves because so far we produced them in digitized form. So they were erased, no formula. But then luckily by that time, it was Schmidt and Lipton in 2009, they published paper in Nature. They shown that you can apply kind of Fourier transform or you can, uh, if you have periodic function, you can describe it with analytical description if this function doesn't have many noise. So what we discovered that 
if you put into this uh, and they produce the software which allows you to derive the analytical form and we discovered that the principal components fit very well to the definition how the analytical function can be discovered and we produced um, the series of five signs or cosine functions which describe very closely the functions we have so this is what was a huge breakthrough in 2015 and we published the nature we predicted the solar activity for the next three cycles and then for uh, for 2000 years we look backward for this activity for until 1200 and look forward until 3200 so this is as soon as we found the formula the solar activity stopped being a puzzle when people when they try to predict at the moment, they can predict only when the cycle started, then they can predict what the next cycle will be. No one can predict what will be cycle next after it. And suddenly we can predict for thousand years. So this is what, um, what happened in 2015. We produced this um, nice um, curve, which look like big bubble with this small um, minima. And uh, we call it summary curve, and we reported it at Landudna National Astronomy Meeting on the 9th of July 2015. What we done, we just uh, were happy that we discovered how the solar activity works. What we say, they produce two waves, and this minima which we observe actually are interference of the waves because this um, approach gives you very simple understanding how the solar activity works. So you don't need to do dramatic anything on the sun. If this waves interfere, sun even is not aware that we don't see any activity on the surface, but we still don't see it. Sun produces these waves and this wave automatically produce either maximum solar activity or suppression of it. So this is what we reported. And at that time, when we reported, we reported about solar activity and there were actually the media people, journalists, they immediately catch, caught up that this minimum which we predict, which come in in the cycle 25, 27, should be the same like mountain minimum and the temperature would decrease. So basically we first were not even thinking that it will decrease, but after journalists pick, pick it up, I checked all the data. I found the papers by Lynn et al. showing that solar irradiance significantly reduced during the grand solar minima, and then the temperature also reduced by one degree. So this is how we discovered and how we came to, to the current status. So we realized that we're probably standing on the verge in 2015 when we reported we were standing on the verge of very unique event on the sun, which none of the generations seen before with the huge um, number of instruments and the uh, recording devices. So mm. we are the first generation, or you generation, others who <laughs> live after us, who mm. will be seeing this grand solar minimum in the full extent mm. with recorded on all the devices so they can definitely say how it will affect each part of the earth so this mm -hmm. is the first time mm. so actually what you discovered is more or less an what you can say a coincidence uh, uh, how, how did the science community react on it when you released uh, your findings it depends uh, <laughs> which community uh, most of the people, of course, were um, were very interested, and now many of them are repeating our calculations. They apply in the background field, and they discovered that it fits much better the solar activity than the sunspot numbers. So obviously, we gave them the magic wand how to unleash the solar activity but there were a number of uh, scientists who by that time when we came they they become declared themselves specialists and they were uh, helping um, people from the climate to um, 
anthropogenic climate to say that the sun would not affect in any way everything which we do on the earth. And for them, they started saying, no, no, even if the solar activity was reduced, the, the temperature on earth will not be reduced. It will be re reduced by uh, one hundredth of percent or one uh, tenth of percent. So it will be a very small amount. And it was 2015. It was, the sun was very hot and remember it was 2017, very heat wave. So obviously, and at that time when I was given an interview, I said, okay, it is not much left to wait. Just let us wait. And we will see in five years when this uh, grand solar minimum starts, who is right. So now you see what happened this year. We have a strong decrease of temperature. Um, I'm surprised um, that it started exactly as predicted, but given the fact that we were using magnetic field of the sun, mm. Basically, we based on the best um, witness. Mm. The sun gave us this magnetic field. It tell us, idiots, look at this. This is what mm. I will be doing. And it is exactly mm. doing what it said. Mm -hmm. This this waves you found in, in, in the sun, or two waves, is, is this doing to the spinning rotation of the sun that creates this uh, waves? In the inner outer layer, or what? What makes what creates no, it's that? it's a dynamo, electromagnetic dynamo. So what we discovered mm. basically is that dynamo operates normally. Previously, people um, assume that dynamo operates on the, the bottom of the convective solar convective zone, mm. create magnetic uh, flux um, loops, and they travel from minimum to maximum to be on the solar surface. What we said that we, we discovered, we, we were not uh, anticipating it. It was what we discovered from principal component that, yes, this wave does exist, but it is media through which these uh, magnetic loops going through above it, beneath the photosphere, it also has its own dynamo, right? and the wavelength of waves generated in inner layer and outer layer are not exactly the same. They're close, but slightly different. And everyone who um, teaches to learn about waves, they know this is waves with the same, with the close frequency, but not the same. They create beating effect. Beating effect, it allows you to have this um, overall envelope when your amplitude oscillates with a different um, magnitude, increased and decreased. And you, you know, beating effect, if you have piano or guitar, you start tuning with the fork. The engineer, when tuned the piano and it is off tune, it here put the sound on the fork and on the piano. If the frequency is the same, they will sound the same. But if they're slightly different, it will hear the beat, physical beat. This is why it's called beating effect. And from number of the beats, the engineer knows how far it needs to tune the string of the piano note, of the piano button, and so on. So this is the same happening on the sun, but it is electromagnetic wave. And obviously we don't have engineer on the sun to tune the waves. So this is why we have this um, ground solar minima after each maxima because uh, the amplitude, the beating effect is that the total frequency of the wave become equal half of sum of a frequency of, in both layer, but amplitude will be oscillating with the frequency equal half of difference between the amplitude. And this is why you create this big envelope yeah. waves when amplitude is increasing. Mm -hmm. So what this is um, shown very nicely in that paper, mm -hmm. and you can show your uh, mm -hmm. viewers. So, and these um, moments when we have beating effect or minima of that, it's called ground solar mm -hmm. minima. This is what we So have. it, it kind of manipulates the, the 11 year old, uh, 11 year old uh, cycles to a lower level to, Decrease the, the sun's activity. It doesn't manipulate 
manipulate 11-year cycle, it's still 11-year mm. cycle. What it manipulates the amplitude mm. of the yeah. cycle. So the cycle is still maybe 10, 11 mm. years, but amplitude mm. is manipulated by this beating effect. So in the middle of the ground solar cycle, amplitude is high, but when it goes to the edge, when the, the, the in particular, it's about 350 or 400 years, um, the, the waves go opposite direction, so they're in antiphase, and they mm. cancel each other, and this is where you have um, ground solar minimum. Mm. It's, it seems like uh, the sun is like the hemispheres, the northern and south, southern hemispheres is quite out of sync uh, at this moment. Is that big, uh, due to these waves uh, going opposite direction? or? Yes, yes, they actually, uh, in the sun, um, what we sh discovered, mm. it's very difficult because it's not part of the wave going there, but because we subtract or put with the sign, so we subtract those which are equal, and what we discovered that these waves separate. One is going to one hemisphere and another goes to another hemisphere. This is what will be happening in the cycle 26, not in this cycle. In this cycle, they're only partially separated. But in cycle 26, these two waves go in opposite hemisphere and they cannot interfere with each other. When they interfere, this solar maximum occurs. But because they move to different hemisphere, there will be a small interference. Mm. And this is why we, we will have a, a, a nearly absent sunspots on, on, on the solar surface. Oh. So what are, what are your predictions for the solar cycle 25? Is going to be then identical to, to 24 or weaker? Um, yes, yeah, solar cycle 25, we found that it will be lower about 20, 30% the cycle 24, but the worst will be cycle 26, which will be 60, 70% lower than the cycle 24. So this is where waves are uh, completely separated, only the part which is mm. equal, they will be in each hemisphere. So. It will not be a lot of solar activity at that time. And I guess the, when we start to feel the effects of grand solar minimum will be the on the declining side of 25, so solar cycle 25, I believe. Yeah, but we still feel it now, even mm. on, in the ascending phase. Um, mm. Normally in the ascending phase, the sun should not have so many spotless days. If you look at the... Belgium Royal Observatory site about spotless day, you would see that the curve showing spotless day in cycle 25, it's much steeper than any other curves calculated before, including to cycle, I don't know, 10 or 12, 14, when it was um, Dalton minimum. So obviously, even in this ascending phase, there are too many spotless days which should not be happening. But obviously the worst comes after the solar maximum in 2025, we hope it will be maximum. And then when the solar activity start going in the descending phase, and especially in the minimum between cycle 25, 26, we start seeing the worst, the, the most cooling, because the sun simply will not produce any heat for us. Mm. Our boiler will be switched off. Mm. So that prediction you, you made about the sun and, and the effects on the Earth climate also got you into, let's say, trouble with the media and, uh, and the folks behind the human-caused global warming. Uh, what, what kind of reaction have you, have you received from that side? Oh, yes, I had a um, <laughs> very tough reaction. <laughs> Some um, scientists from Monash University contacted Royal Astronomical Society demanding to remove press release about our paper in 2015, which to the owner of the director of communication, he refused and sent him to us. And many others, they said, oh, there will not be decrease of the temperature and so on. But it was not my prediction. I used, it was Shindel et al. in 2001. They did investigation would happen during the last ground solar minimum, Mounder, on the whole earth. They produced 
in the science, very terrific maps where the temperature was increased, decreased, and so on. At least it was the first uh, investigation which shown not only England in Northern Hemisphere, but some others. But in 17th century, we didn't have many observers in the Southern Hemisphere, so we don't have much data we will have now. So this is what uh, people at that time, 2001, were not actually, you know, fully brainwashed by this anthropogenic global warming. They, they wrote what it is truth, and I based it on their paper. It is not like, then I look at the investigation by other solar radiance during the amount of minimum, and they also indicate that solar radius was reduced very dramatically in solar temperatures. So the, all the signs were indicating to it. I didn't realize how, how badly people with the climate change, they do not want the sun to contribute in any way. I didn't realize how badly they ignore the sun. It was not, before we published paper, I didn't have the full acknowledgement what they've done. Only after that, I was pushed to read these reports and discover, oh my God, how could they write this? So this, uh, this kind of thing, which um, still surprises me. And now more and more reasonable thinking come to, to life because uh, remember, it was 2010 or nine, one of those um, uh, propagandists of the anthropogenic warming, they said that we will not have eyes on the North Pole by 2020. Yeah, this was or 2019, something like that. But we know now <laughs> that ice <laughs> area is increased because we become into the great ground solar minimum. So obviously, uh, <sighs> I believe the people simply did not realize how strongly Earth and planets are affected by our central star. They did not respect the nature to full extent. They thought they can tell anything they want and no one can disapprove them. No one, because uh, they can tell that you're not telling the truth. They put a the lot of referees, editors on you, uh, remove your paper, and they say, no, no, we're telling the truth. The only mm. thing they couldn't do mm. to make sun follow the <laughs> yes. yes. This yeah. is what, this is what <laughs> happened. Yeah. Actually, what baffles me, is, uh, I, I, along with your work, I follow also a lot of other people who look at the sun and uh, a common thing for them is that they always, all their work is kind of ignored. They not really, no one wants to touch it because of it kind of contradicts uh, this the value of CO2. Uh, um, it seems uh, odd that a discovery like yours is not uh, in all the papers all over the world with the like excitement or a like, new discovery, but because of because of it talks against uh, human caused global warming, then everyone wants to ignore it. Um, yeah. Exactly. This is what's happening. Uh, the pro few professors from Scandinavian countries, from actual Netherlands, they created mm. the group Clintel, mm. and about thousand of them, and I was one of them, signed the letter to the UN mm. uh, claiming and asking, do not trust this, that the sun does nothing or it is f fully induced. There, there are much more evidences. The question is not fully um, closed. The many contradictory evidences we need to look at and prove. And it was even before we published, it was, they created 2016 and probably immediately after we published. And uh, I, after that, I've seen the presentation from the conference for people about the ocean change, about atmospheric change. I look even at the papers, how they came up with this um, global warming, why, why they said. Basically, I understood their reasoning. And the reasoning was that uh, if uh, it was Eddie and other scientists discovered that the temperature on the Earth follows the solar activity, and it was following fine, fine until 2010 or 2000. And then the solar activity shown signs 
declining because it started moving towards ground solar minimum, but the Earth temperature still was increasing. And this um, split of the activity and um, the temperature increase let people who do predict terrestrial temperature saying, oh, the solar forcing is not working, it has to be something else. And this is why they came up with something else and then suddenly came up that it has to be carbon emission because the only emission which is linked to the uh, uh, to the water in, in the Earth atmosphere, which has very strong intense emission in infrared uh, wavelength length. Um, and this, uh, they thought this emission is reflected from from the clouds backwards and hits the earth like greenhouse. But they, what I looked, of course, after that, my PhD was in radiative transfer. When I look at this, uh, uh, after we found, um, let's say, late in 2019, we published the paper in which we discovered that it might be extra solar forcing, which come in because the sun is moving closer to the earth, in to the earth orbit because of its uh, solar inertial motion. And this paper, they were anthropogenic global warming people become absolutely furious. I suddenly, I realized only after they retracted this paper that I suddenly given the extra force which can heat this, which can approve this increase of the temperature and it is still solar force because, and they said, no, 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 this is, cannot happen, this never can happen. Actually, if this happened, they retracted my paper, I put, um, uh, I went on the website in the lockdown, downloaded the ephemeris of this sun earth distance for 2000 years and proven that I was absolutely right. They <laughs> so obviously now they have a big problem because I've proven it was a tiny um, paragraph in our paper 2019 that we suggested that might be sun put extra heating because it comes closer in its motion to the orbit of the earth. But we didn't do a calculation, we just put suggestion. But this heretic suggestion made people <laughs> with anthropogenic global warming absolutely furious. They, they hit us with the full power from any oh. points and they made the editors to retract papers and they now refuse to issue us the oh. apologies. They refuse to issue mm. the apologies. Did they tell you that they like the reason why they rejected, or did did, did you just get an excuse? Yeah, they, they they put the reason what they rejected, and now I've proven this reason is not mm. correct because they said that the distance between sun and earth does not change um, with the limits which we suggested mm. up to zero point zero two astronomical unit. Ephemeral show that this distance changes to up to the point zero dot zero one six, which is exactly the magnitude I told. It's one sixteen of thousand. So the ephemeral proves I'm we were correct, and this is how it changes. Simply what it gives that these people were not aware about this motion. They simply did not know it does exist, and what lead us to the next question, how exactly then they put extra input from carbon? Because one thing is refuse the heating from somewhere, but then you need somehow manipulate and find the heating from elsewhere. So this is why I looked at the heating with carbon or two and discovered that indeed carbon or two combined with water is a very huge um, number in atmosphere and it creates big blob of it but what it turns out that this big blob it has a huge optical depth which means that you have a huge number of atoms 
on the line of sign in the amity state, which they assume he's back to the earth. But everyone who learned radiative transfer, they know that it doesn't matter how much radiation you have in this um, media. The only radiations come from the media is from the optical depth equal one. But optical thickness of the whole this media is about 400. So what people from anthropogenic global warming did, they assumed that whole of this radiation, carb carbon or two, is dumped into the earth with all 400 optical depths. Well, in reality, it would be seeping very slowly from the optical thickness one yeah. until the whole radiation come from the whole area. So this is why how they managed to find this missing bit. <laughs> <laughs> but this was the error. Yeah. This was the error in radiative transfer. This is it. So, so this new paper you launch, uh, you release this is uh, the the sun wobbles. Uh, it's, it's in the center of the solar system, but it wobbles because of uh, the big giant gas giant uh, spinning around it, and they kind of drags it around for uh, like pulls it from the center of of the solar system, yeah. and then. Uh, Changes the distance from this from Earth to to the Sun uh, in that in that uh, for that reason. Um, so, uh, can you can you publish publish that in another paper or is it just uh, grounded that paper? I published it in the chapter in the book mm. uh, called Solar System and Exoplanet. Mm. People from astrophysics they knew for the past two decades that if the star is wobbling, mm. it means it has to have planets. And this is how this search for exoplanets is based on the wobbling star. This is why they took my paper into their book because it gives them much more information. Now they learn what to see from the exoplanet and star and how compared with the sun because nobody gave them what we have in the sun because nobody bothered to explore it and suddenly now we shown them what it could be and this uh, turn out that the mm, solar uh, irradiance varies with the period 2100 2200 years it is well known period Holstead cycle but no one could find the physical nature of Holstead cycle and we discovered that this whole the cycle is very strict. The period is very well defined. It cannot be inner because this, like dynamo period, it is not so well defined, the uh, electromagnetic force inside. But this one is well defined, which gave us inclination. It has to be something related to the motion. It has to be. And, and this, we started digging the literature, and we found this uh, solar inertial motion. And then we found that obviously this um, variation has to be related how the planets move. This is where good periodicity is maintained. And discovered that on top of the Kepler law, which defined that all planets move around the large star, but when Kepler discovered law, Newton has not yet reported his gravity law. It was slightly later. And when Newton reported gravity law, they did not incorporate yet fully into this. And only later, in 1965, it was the scientist Jose who first brought attention. 1965, so now nearly 70 years, right? 35, 20, 55 years. And uh, there were many scientists who were putting this effect onto the sun. They, they assumed that maybe these uh, magnetic loops appear because of different effects of the planets. But no one, no one looked at, at the effect of how solar radiance would change. And uh, we, 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 we discovered this circle, this uh, cycle of 2000 and something years. So we thought, okay, let's calculate how irradiance would change. And when we calculate, it gives you that it should change exactly how they report every 2000, 2200 years. And it means that 
in the last we calculated 120,000 years. So we had about 60 of these millennial cycles and they are survived. We still have the earth, nothing happened. Nothing was overheated. It is not like um, ice period uh, because of the fluctuation of the, uh, of the earth orbit. We have 100,000 years when we have ice period, when the ice comes from the Arctic and Antarctic and swipes everything uh, up to near the, all the middle latitudes are gone. So this is not that bad, but still for 60 times we came through this period, we managed to survive. So uh, I believe we survived this one because from 2,600 approximately, the sun start moving backwards towards the mm. um, focus of the ellipse of the Earth mm. orbit. And it obviously start moving back where it should be and away from the Earth and the temperature start mm. decreasing. So we'll get back what we had in 17th century. So the heating from the mount minimum is uh, due to uh, the solar activity going up, but also that uh, we get a little closer to the sun due to, it, to the wobbling effect. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So, so you don't see any uh, any uh, forcing from CO2 heating heating forcing. Uh, I cannot say there are probably forcing which mm. what we were speaking about the baseline increase of the mm. temperature. So mm. there are always uh, forcing on the above the baseline, below baseline. I cannot mm. tell about this one. No. It would be big, affected by humans and so on. Mm. I, I big, we did not picture. investigate. So you, you see the big picture? Yeah, we see the big picture, the trend. And mm. what real oscillations, if they increase, um, mm. even with the people supporting anthropogenic global warming, like can rise from Edinburgh, we agreed that they accept that increase of the temperature can be along the, um, you know, average temperature will be following what we said, but they say that increased anthropogenic will be on top, like sine function or something. Um, I don't know. I haven't done it. I cannot tell you about this. It has to be something else, but uh, it's possible, but definitely it is not the main contribution. If it does exist, it main contribution come from the sun, the extra solar forcing, which they forgotten to add, and it will cover up and they need to correct how they calculate back uh, scattered radiation from CO2, uh, mm. including the rules of the radiative transfer and not dumping, mm. which is physically is not dumpable on the earth, unfortunately. And then you, you have all the indirect forcing from the sun, like uh, cosmic ray and uh, stuff maybe we don't really know about. Uh, I see a, a paper just released about solar, the, the solar cycle influenced uh, the La Nina and La, La, uh, El Nino cycle in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, oh yeah. E even though they, we don't really know the, the mechanism, but it, it, the correlation is still very strong. Um, yeah. So, still a lot of things we don't know. Um, yeah. uh, you you found a like, almost, like around four hundred years cycle at the sun. Uh, many of us have seen shorter cycles like sixty and hundred years and two hundred years uh, cycles of the sun. Uh, is this something you see in your your work? The shorter well, cycle in the sun. The two hundred year cycle could be the same cycle with my four hundred because what I'm saying. It is like solar cycle 22 years because we are including the magnetic field polarity. Mm. So if you uh, reflect our, our curve all to the positive polarity, it will start mm. looking like 200 year cycle, for example. Mm. And uh, uh, so I don't know about 60 other year cycles. I did not investigate. No. I don't see no. what is the nature I don't see in the solar dynamo what the nature would produce this uh, mm. uh, this cycle. So I cannot tell you. I, I... The many see the, the the gravity pull from the Jupiter, Jupiter and, Neb and uh, Saturn might make some interference in the sun. Just like they can, it can pull the sun out of its center. 
maybe it can pull something like make some interference in the in the sun's activity. Uh, is it is that plausible? Um, no, I actually more trust. There were when they appeared first um, about the planetary effect on the solar mm. activity. It was a paper Abro et al. 2012. They published mm. that the sun could produce this um, 11 year cycle and uh, because of the uh, attraction from planets, they, they use planetary. And there were a number of papers published by Cameroon and um, um, Schussler, uh, Cameroon and Schussler 2013. He show, they shown that these cycles, 60 years, 40 and others, actually they are noise. They put a lot of noise. What they do the investigation, they put real cycle and then put a lot of noise, white noise, different. And because uh, of the specific of <laughs> people start analyzing these, uh, some sporadic cycles which are not exist, appear in this noise and they've proven that these cycles are white noise. The real cycles which a large and confident um, detection were 11 year cycle and um, I don't remember which one, 200, this 200 something, which is our 401. And others were, what they done this, this is the noise. So this is obviously when people start uh, analyzing large statistical data and if you look far too long into the screen, you start seeing what you want to see. <laughs> this is what uh, I trust, uh, I read this paper, then they repeated the publication in 2017 and 2019. So uh, from the other extent, what I say, after we found that Dynamo works as at the bottom of the solar interior, so closer to the surface, definitely closer to the surface, planets could affect somehow uh, in which um, latitudes the loops will be appearing. So, but it's not gravitation. Gravitation from the planets, even from the large planets cannot make waves like gravitation of moon make waves in the earth. The gravitation is negligible, but magnetic field of the planet is much stronger. So it might call because the, beneath the solar surface, the loops are magnetic. So it could be some interference attracting. So I'm not denying that the planets could affect possibly. And now when we know that we have this outer layer close to the surface, it's much easier to affect because in the original paper, Abro, he needed that the planets would change the size, the shape of the sun should become slightly elliptical. So if the sun is slightly elliptical, it could produce activity, but there's no evidence this become elliptical. Why would sun become elliptical because of the sun? So to me, it looks much more reasonable if the planets will be affecting this outer layer and given the, the waves from inner layer still come through the outer layer and maybe this effect of the outer layer and gives us this beating effect because theoretically, if there are no planets, this outer layer and inner layer should be the same uh, frequency, producing wave mm. with the same frequency, but mm. they don't, as we know, and mm. to find the reason, now we have new encouragement to find the reason, and mm. I keep this option open, why not? Yeah. Um, what kind of uh, changes do you see on the, on the, what effects do you see on the, the upcoming Grand solar minimum on the Earth. How how low would the temperature go in your predictions? It's not my prediction. The prediction, Schindel, uh, Lynn et al., Easterbrook, a number of authors repeating this uh, investigation mm. before they started correcting that everything mm. is <laughs> not changing. They reckon that the temperature during Grand solar minimum drops by one degree in mm. total and 
in pretty lengthy period. In during Mount minimum, it was six solar cycle. It was sixty years. So definitely, yeah. first two cycles, the temperature was not very low. But the closer you come to drop, it will be very low, especially. Yeah. Um, so luckily for us. Our ground solar minimum is only three cycles, so mm. 25 is started, temperature started dropping. The worst will be cycle 26 when the temperature mm. will be the lowest, but then cycle 27 will be like cycle 25, and cycle mm. 28 return back to normal. The mm. sun starts shining as before, and everything <laughs> come back, including global warming, because mm. the sun still in the same position closer to the Earth in mm. the spring equinox position and it will mm. be moving closer closer for the next 500 years so mm. this is what what we have oh so kind of like a also minimum climate climate uh, climate around um Dalton minimum was in cycle 23 24. Mm. the cycle 25 27 it is mountain minimum mm. Because so, uh, the, the uh, solar activity drop a cycle 23, 24, and the previous mm. Dalton minimum was 100 years, so it was in the mm. same period, about 1900, so 2000, this is mm. what, when the cycle 23 started. So this is when Dalton minimum mm. was 93, 94, uh, cycle 23, 24, and cycle 25, 27, this is full mountain minimum. Mm. So in your uh, your uh, that theory about like the the component in the in the sun, can that explain the, the like the Roman middle middle age warm, warm period and the Roman uh, warm period and like one thousand years apart? Yes, yeah, we we managed to calculate our um, summary curve back to Romans and we hit this mm -hmm. uh, Homer. Um, um, Gomeric minimum exactly mm. when it was at that time when they had Gomeric minimum Romans even stopped the wars for 30 years they stopped um, occupying other countries because the snow and the the frost was so dramatic that they needed to survive and the, you put backwards uh, some people keep sending me from climate from the ocean investigation different dates and when they spend dates when they had minima and when i put on my chart it will come exactly when they put so it's very incredible if people do legible um, investigation they fit pretty well and i have to say that the summary curve we produce it is only f produced by dipole magnetic waves so the sun has north and south pole and produce dipole waves but we also shown that it could be quadruple waves. The amplitude is um, twice, if not four times lower, but there will be slight correction of this. So it will be slight shift of this, but even for dipole waves, it give you 67% of the, any activity you have on the sun. It still produces you very good fit. We got a wolf minimum, grand solar minimum, or solar minimum, all the heat in these uh, windows which we, we, we produce. So it looks like uh, it is the sun helped us to understand better. So I said the failure to improve solar activity index with the digital pattern recognition in our mm. European project, which we did, mm. came up with the success finding the new proxy which helped us to understand better and find mm. and find this mathematical formula which produces mm. the solar activity curve and i guess the limitation is that we are we are limited to to watch the sun from the from from a distance we cannot really send now we have this uh, parker sun probe going on mm -hmm. spinning around going on in orbit with the sun but that's actually the first time we actually can get a little close to the sun and observe for, for get real data. Um, so we're still a little bit behind in exploring the, 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 the sun, like close up. Um, yes. And it we would be exciting. with the, the sun no. enough. So it, the, 
doing a grand solar minimum it would be exciting be exciting for scientists to be able to 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 measure and see and watch and, and see what's what's going on and like how the how the earth reacts to it uh, absolutely so to, mm. absolutely it is so unique mm. i think we live in the historic moments people mm. who will be doing research in the next 30 years will be written in the historic books because we mm. put this data which never had before we only mm. guess we needed to measure them uh, how many isotopes were in the biomass and so on here mm. we have the first hand mm. information yeah and then compare what you get from isotope what mm. you get from others and see how mm. accuracy varies yeah and that's that's how science should be like not it should not be political controlled uh, what what you can publish and uh, what you can say uh, it's it's a little bit a pity like uh, that if if this opportunity go to waste because of politician uh, denying it uh, it would be a, a, a shame for for science for for our 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 understanding of the sun earth connection um, so what is the future for you? Do you have uh, other projects coming up or, or, or what is um, what's uh, going on in the This was my extracurriculum activity. My mm. main project was the investigation of accelerated particles mm. in the sun and in the heliosphere and the solar wind. So I'm very excited about the solar probe, solar orbiter, when we have measurements of accelerated particles and will understand better how it propagates from the sun to the earth. And um, in, uh, I don't know if you're aware, in 1998, we with uh, Sasha Kosovich have discovered sun quakes. Obviously it was 1998 and paper was published in Nature and uh, it was in all five continents, the battalion, because it was first time the science captivated people. So we now progressed with this one. We explained how the sun quake occurred and uh, we published only last year two papers and we uh, managed to observe large number of sun quakes and so on. So there's a number of things which I'm working on and, um, but this whole activity is uh, global. I didn't realize how many people are interested in solar activity. So what much in the uh, uh, accelerated particles or any sun quakes happening, which are huge, much larger, a thousand times larger than sun quake, for example, in San Francisco. And they happen regularly on the sun. But because they're happening so far away, we do not bother. But because they happen in the heat comes to us and we were having enough heat. But now everything stopped. The sun put everything on hold and we, that feeling it and it doesn't matter what it happened and we need to think how to deal with what we have at the moment our boiler mm. is off <laughs> we need to start heating ourselves <laughs> and what what i see uh, like research like it seems like a, a big cmes like carrington class cbs is very like maybe not common but but more more like uh, likely to to happen in a grand solar minimum minimum is this something you you look into yeah uh, during solar maximum uh, the next four or five years or so six uh, we hope there will be some cmes it was one mm. last uh, month or so mm. uh, but they're not this frequent normally when no. As in ascending phase, we, we should mm. have CME after CME. The CME would happen last month. It was even not directed towards the earth. So we don't mm. have any heat. This is why our temperature was so low in April mm. and May, because we don't have any CMEs coming our way. Please mm. put the heat back. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anything you'd like to add? Uh, anything you'd like to say? Um, no, I hope uh, we all survive and uh, what <laughs> we need now to have more heating and uh, mm. actually, I, as far as I know, carbon O2 gas mm. is very useful for uh, greenery people yeah. in the 
uh, greenhouses uh, or in the mm. uh, centers uh, where mm. they sell the uh, shrubs, they put CO2 specifically to have better leaves and so on. Mm. And Patrick Moore, the guy who founded Greenhouse Motion, and now mm. he is separated from anthropogenic global warming, he reckons mm. CO2 be, been demonized for nothing. Mm. It is yeah. not causing what it is. It is a very no. useful gas. What we mm. basically now need more uh, heating, and we should not be afraid producing heating with coil or no. gas, because we put more no. CO2. If it is mm. global warming, it, it's uh, global cooling at the moment, because uh, mm. ground solar minimum. It doesn't yeah. matter how much we put. We remember that it's, it is packed within this mm. media with the optical thickness. It will not mm. dump on us. It will not. No. CO2 is basically just plant food. Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah. And the, to so, demonize this gas, I understand there is nothing else in the radiation which could account for this temperature. I'll explain you the reason, historic one. Mm. There was no mm. anything on their website was written. There's no other mechanism to heat. And we found mm. it. This is the one. And this mm. is why they were so upset when we suggested, oh, there is another mechanism, still the sun. Mm. And this yeah. is what we need now. People need to change their mind because why, uh, if it is other mechanism, we, we can adjust ourselves. We don't need to jump from our skin to, to do something impossible. If mm. medieval people, if ancient people managed to survive, we survive. <laughs> we do. Yes, uh, no, most likely. And I guess that's what science is about, that you you look through the data and if it doesn't fit uh, the facts, then you have to change direction and until you meet something that, that fits. And then you, you, you have to follow, follow the evidence. Uh, yes. Uh, to where, 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 it, where it leads to. Um, if I gave you the power to, uh, to rule the world, uh, instead of demonizing CO2, what, what would you do? What would, you, what would your policy be uh, for the next, let's say, 50 years, mm. if you could, could decide? Yeah, we need to start working on the energy resources and um, mm. supplying the food. The energy resources mm. is essential, but when you have winter, all around the year, you need to provide for those periods when you don't have vegetation, we don't have food for animals, for people. You need to provide this. You need to arrange somewhere. It is grown in the south and delivered to the northern countries because northern countries will be covered with the snow for the whole year. So this needs to be think, thought through. It is not simple that you wake up and tomorrow you start doing it. When you wake up and tomorrow is snow, it's already late. And I know that Chinese researchers, they listen very carefully what we say. So this global warming is somehow the Northern American European bit. But Chinese, they bought a lot of land in Africa and they know they will start growing vegetable fruit and they will make big money supplying it to all the Northern continent. Yes, yes. So this is what they need to do. They need, yes, it, it is, it was global warming. No one denies you need to think, but they found different villain. Maybe need to change the tune, but luckily the sun gives us 33 years of this cooling to reshuffle, change the forces and provide for your population in every country, they can survive this 30 years and not die from this starvation because it could not be, food cannot be produced. We, we have today this uh, spring, the frost was so cold in uh, April that my range rangers are frozen out. They're not flourishing. So, okay, I don't eat range rangers, but some people put potato it was frozen out. They need to put extra potato. And this is in May, in April. What will be in the next five, seven years when the activities start decreasing? It might be frost until June. 
and what we will be eating. Apples may be gone, maybe other fruits will be gone. So this is the thing we need to think through. Mm. And mm. It, it is not thinking just wake up and start thinking tomorrow. You need to think mm. ahead over the years, over the decade. Just like when you when you see a hurricane uh, approach land, you will start to make pre uh, prepare, pre pre precautions, like you get people out of the way and you seal all houses and uh, like because you know they're coming, so you have to be you have you, ha you have to get ready. You don't have to panic. Just get ready. Get, exactly. Have a plan. Mm. Exactly. I would mm. say uh, medieval people they didn't know it will be coming. And <laughs> many no. uh, it was scared and everything. We mm. like it that we know it ahead. We know yeah, it. Exactly. We can prepare. Mm. Why not? When do you see, when do you see the bottom of the of the uh, grand solar minimum? When when, do, when when is it like the worst part? I have to go. My battery is running low. I need to switch on. So we'll change location. But I'm still speaking yeah, with fine. you. Uh, the bottom will be minimum. Um, probably between the during the cycle 26 so uh, end of 20s a beginning mm. of um, 40s this uh, mm. 15 years probably will be the worst at my so, uh, perception so it's like slow declining temperature towards like in the next 10 to 12, uh, 15 years and then yes. from from there you will start slowly to to warm up again Yes, so we have about five, six years to prepare to the next decline, but the mm. government needs forget about global warming, put it on hold. We don't mm. say them completely forget. It will no. return in 27, but for time being, much more urgent mm. is to provide food and provide mm. heat for people mm. and animals for this uh, ground solar minimum. Mm. And we have, uh, we have fossil fuels, and with modern technology, we are able to to control the pollution in some extent. So it's, it's not that big a problem anymore. Uh, yes. So we can do it. Uh, and yeah, of control course, nuclear... pollution is one thing, but mm. uh, to control heating, you 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 need fossil fuel. It doesn't mm. actually do that harm when people try yeah. to assign to it. It warms no. you up. I will never give up no. my gas boiler. I'm <laughs> planning to replace my normal. I want to put coil. I remember when I was a child, my grandmother put this coil heating, and it was such a nice smell when they start putting. In whole village, you smell this nice thing, and many uh, old people say at that period, none of the roses had funguses or others because this CO2, it kills all these um, um, bad influences. Now we have a lot of funguses, they try to reduce it. So everything comes at a price. And the, um, I, I can send you also the uh, links that produce that all these um, windmills or uh, solar batteries, which produce electricity, this is done at the expenses of fossil fuels. All these batteries done at the, such huge expenses that whatever they produce, they still not reproduce the energy contributed to them. And you can you you they use so much of rare metals, which basically, which are not um, deteriorated in time. So when the life come off from these. Um, uh, renewable electrical devices to go they're basically waste it will be waste on the whole planet solar battery kill the wildlife in many villages so the, the, this is no one thinks about it they, they put this money and 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 then discover that everything they produce to produce only battery they put so much energy into it that whatever mm. this battery will reproduce it will not reproduce the contribution to producing it. No. Um, but it seems like it, they have to they have to see it before they realize what what's going to happen. Uh, it's it's hopefully 
uh, I, I, I've been following your work for, uh, for, for a while. I, I know many people look at your work, uh, maybe in silence, maybe they don't want to admit it, but many, many look at it and maybe many start to uh, be aware of it. Like this is, this could happen. Uh, of course, no one knows exactly what the consequences would be uh, because of the climate is complex, but, but there's no, no, no doubt that the, the temperature will go down uh, in some extent and uh, we have to prepare for it. Uh, yeah, we better be prepared for it. Uh, mm. We better assume it is happening because what we got, I, I have to say, when we predicted 2015, when this ground solar minimum started 2020, uh, I thought it will be plus minus, you don't know. Mm. I didn't know it will start exactly just in time. But then I thought, <laughs> look, I've been using the solar data, solar magnetic mm. field. So obviously it tells you exactly the magnitude. We found this own oscillation, own eigen value and eigen vector of the sun. So why would it uh, contradict to itself? It follows its own mm. eigen vector. It mm. follows what it traces. So yeah, it's very regular. Uh, the orbit of the planets is very regular. So there is not much change in it. Like it's exactly. very. So. And to, to my pleasure, there were a number of um, two papers, three, four papers, people repeating, some people repeating our results, predicting that we entered ground solar minimum. They do mm. not cite us, but after six years, they claim they discovered we entered ground solar minimum. Oh. Well, when we mentioned to them, they pretend that they didn't read us. I said, well, for six years, others read, so you cannot avoid. Mm. There were other two papers uh, which use the um, background magnetic field at the feed to the solar activity, one in Russia, another in Stanford. They repeat our results. So obviously, mm. from each point of view, we done correctly, but we done mm. six years before them. So yeah. it's, it's good, good to know. Mm. Nice to know that uh, it it, it has some uh, consensus about it uh, for others to try it. Um, I don't have any more questions. I think it's uh, we get all around uh, covered a lot of topics. Uh, thank you very much much for talking with me. It was a pleasure. Okay, it was a pleasure answering your questions and good luck with your publication. Let me know when it is ready. I will be happy I will. to review it. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.